Um, hello, everyone. We're so glad to have you here today. Um, from the corner of South Delhi, we have with us today Nishtha Gandhi, a fashion blogger and uh, content creator. From such amazing content to beautiful outfit ideas, she's going to talk with us about what it means to be successful in the fashion industry. So, hi, Nishtha. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. I hope you've been having a good day. <laughs> yes, I've been having a great day. Um, what it means to be a fashion blogger and, um, you know, what's an average day in your life? The average day in my lockdown life actually looked like um, if I had to think of ideas about what videos I want to make or how I'm going to be go about my personal content. So I used to conceptualize that, write it down and that day... I used to wake up, work out, uh, get ready and start shooting all of those videos. Then by the end of the day, I had to edit all of those videos and push them out on Instagram. So that is a usual cycle every alternate day. I um, try to shoot a lot of content together so I don't have to uh, do the same thing every day. Uh, when it's a brand or a sponsored uh, scheduled video or a post, I usually go... Um, plan the entire thing, strategize it in my head, have my own, own whole team help me out. I have a videographer, photographer. And then once we're done with all the planning and stuff, we choose a day or pick a day and then we go there. We record everything. We decide uh, like the BTS is a lot of mess. And then we come back home and we decide how to uh, edit. And then it goes to the brand. It comes back and then we edit a little bit of more. Um, a little bit more and then it goes back and it's a lot of back and forth and once finally the video is edited and it is pushed out uh, for the sponsored post for my personal post it's, it basically depends on me so okay. how I want the edit to be yeah wow that's that sounds like a lot of scheduling and planning and um, I, I didn't realize it would be this much work so a question that you know we've been asking a lot of the interesting people that we've met so far is that unconventional careers sort of raise a lot of financial concerns, especially when you're starting out. I mean, is that something um, that you um, sort of expected in this industry as well? Or, and if so, how did you uh, tackle it? Yeah. Financial stress in the sense, can you just explain right. it? Right. I mean, um, I think it comes with the fact that, you know, there's no fixed, uh, some professions will not have fixed salaries that you'd probably get in a nine to five job. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot more different in the sense of where you will receive your sources. See, to be honest, uh, the only reason I quit my job was because this profession was probably fetching me three or four times more. And even if I don't uh, like get a specific amount every month I still had enough money for me to like keep that amount separately as my savings and then use it when something like corona hits or <laughs> anything that is random but yeah I mean it's I barely had any savings when I was working a job so this was a much better platform in general yeah I think that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense and plus you have a lot of sources from which you can as you mentioned sponsored posts I think that is also a big yeah. thing in um, the fashion industry specifically. And given that everything yeah. is virtual at this point. Um, at this point, yeah. So I wanted to ask you about what it means to be a fashion blogger in the sense that, you know, um, um, they've heard it's sort of a balance from what I have seen. It's sort of a balance between having your own personal style and mixing it with what is sort of trendy or aesthetic at the moment. Have you sort of found that balance? And do you agree with this? Like, not yet, to be honest. I personally feel like everybody has a different body type. And uh, there are some people who can carry off anything that's in trend. And there are some people who can't. And I am personally not a person who follows trend, uh, trends to the T. I am uh, I'm more of a person who, follow, uh, who basically just stick to things that suit me more. Uh, for example, like... The, the cycling shorts trend came in. It took me a while to accept that trend because I really did not believe in wearing shorts that come to the knee. I either wear full pants or I wear like mini shorts or hot pants. So I, it was really difficult for me to accept that trend. But then eventually it became so big that I had to just like latch on to it. So there are some trends that I just don't understand and I don't go for them. Uh, so I think I lack there, but 
I don't know how long can it survive for me because I feel like a lot of fashion bloggers just get on that bandwagon very early, and I take my time to accept trends as my own. So it takes time. No, that's actually wonderful. I think it's it's in your own way making you unique because you're doing yeah. only what you love, and yeah. Um, but that's nice. Um, so you've mentioned that how it's a sort of learning process that as a blogger, you know, you want to find what's right for you, what doesn't work for you. Um, do you think your whole um, sort of journey with jobs and your whole, uh, you know, educational background does that play a role? Like, is there any degree or any I don't know any sort of learning um, that helps you in that process, <laughs> or does it not? Well, like, next, I was a, a master's in economics. And then I eventually just turned to this, and I learned everything on my own. So, uh, like, I pro, I pretty much know Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere Pro now. So, it wasn't a degree degree that I had. Also, because I, like, for some people, I feel your passion comes a lot later to you. And I know some people who just know from the, from day one what they want to do. So I have friends who knew, who knew from day one what they wanted from life, and I was always this really confused being who like, "Acha marks aage, so let's do eco. Acha marks aage, so master bhi kar lete." Basically, I was capable of doing anything I wanted to, but I did not feel like I this is what I want to end up doing my entire life. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty much in a space where I love what I do, and it's not like I'm doing it for the money because I've literally done it for years when i wasn't turning a penny so i know for a fact that if money is coming very good because i don't have to go to other ways to earn my bread and still do what i love and earn my bread through that oh wow that's yeah that that makes sense i think that's also a concern that a lot of indian students especially face that you know if you've gotten the marks like you have every opportunity but it doesn't align with your passion necessarily um <laughs> and in india it's very difficult for somebody to accept your passion i feel like a non conformist or an edgy career path is still very new for a lot of people here i feel yeah that's completely fair i i definitely understand what you're coming from also to sort of bring up what you've mentioned about video editing and premiere pro and all of these additional skills do you think that comes hand in hand with your work as a fashion blogger like that's something that becomes essential along the way it definitely is essential uh, there's no way you can be uh, you can be blogging in the current scenario where everything is short span and you have videos and you have pictures to put out there because everything is visionary now you people don't even go on websites and read i think anymore so i feel like editing comes very handy there are some people out there who wouldn't edit anything uh, because they have teams from day one and they have people that, taking care of stuff for them but i've always uh, been a very independent one woman army sort of a person who i somehow just feel even if i give my work in somebody else's hand now i will be so controlling of the fact that i want this thing this way that they won't be able to work and i won't be satisfied so i might as well do a lot of things my own way so i tend to think that i should be dividing my pressure amongst people but then again i feel it's more pressure when the output doesn't come out my way so right. you have to be like adept with all of these things yourself as well yeah i think that's fair especially in the fact that um we're sort of progressing in this industry so it's it becomes sort of an essential thing at this point where if you want to be better or you want to have an edge over the others it's it becomes a little good to have those skills it comes to like um projects that you've taken up is it a lot more of doing what you personally are okay with because i assume that a lot of projects come your way but it's not like someone can choose every single project out there yeah of course you can't choose uh, some of them are out like some of them are very low budgets and you are not willing to do it some of them don't al- align with your uh, values you don't do it and uh, yeah i mean and plus i think working with brands also depends on how the brand is dealing with the project so when it's my personal content i have a lot of liberty in choosing or doing what i want to do but when it comes to brand project they have very they have guidelines and specifications that you have to have to follow that there's very less creative freedom so 
sometimes it's just annoying and you don't want to work with a specific brand so it's like that yeah, yeah. i completely get that that's <laughs> that's definitely understanding if there's anyone who's interested in this um, industry and you've been such a you've probably just gained a lot of experience in it what would you advise them like what is something that would come from you that you feel is something they should know okay major advice that i would want to give is um uh, i feel that originality works the best in this industry anything that is you mainly and secondly is do not work free do not because for anybody who's doing creative a creative job the value is any which way very very less for some reason in india because every analytical professional job is put on a higher pedestal than somebody who's creatively thinking for some reason so anybody who puts you on a lower platform than you believe or you think you're worthy of do not take up that project or do not just sell yourself short is what i can say because once you start placing your value at a higher pedestal from day one is when people in the industry will also start valuing you more right for sure that's that's definitely true i believe we're going to have a sm- short segment which is basically rapid fire round um where i'll be asking one question and just like a few questions and i hope you answer in like one word or like maximum a sentence is that yeah, all right yeah. all right mm-hmm. um if you could choose only one brand to build all of your outfits from which one would it be <laughs> that's a very complicated question um uh, <laughs> all my outfits yes i think zara oh that's a, that's definitely an amazing choice i would say um all right so another question is um what is one outfit that you have seen on a red carpet or at basically an award show that you find unforgettable unforgettable uh. i have to really think about this <laughs> It's okay. Take your time. I can't right now. Nah, I don't have anything in mind like that on the top of my head. Okay, okay, that's completely all right. Um, we we'll move on to the next question. But I which... did see this one dress, which wasn't a red carpet dress. It was basically a rainbow. dress i'll just see if i can find it because it's everywhere these days i mean you can But I... show it to us we'll just project it along with the yeah 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 okay cool yeah but oh that's amazing um this one ah uh, okay yes i think i've seen this one too um yeah. all right so next question what is one project that you have worked on that you find memorable or perhaps unforgettable again I think I worked on uh, there was this project I got from MR Homes, which was basically a smart home, and I had to work on it and I had to like show in a video I had to show them through the three D model of flat, which is kind of very interesting. What I had in mind was obviously very different from what the band wanted, but it, that was one of my favorites. And uh, I also had this PC Chandra Jewels project. and i had complete creative freedom in that so i i think that was one of my favorites well thank you so much for answering our questions and just um, you know being so open it's been so enlightening also to know and just understand what this profession means i think i especially have learned so many things that i did not know about so thank okay. you so much <laughs> thanks for having me um i'm